you've been working with video inside of Adobe Photoshop, quickly assembling clips and adding music, be sure to check out some of those other lessons over at the Photo Focus Video for Photographers Learning Series. Now, one of the first things I want to do here is make sure to save my project and capture the changes. So I'm going to store this as an actual Photoshop file, and all it is is a Photoshop file that links to the other clips. And so I put this in the same folder so it's easy for everything to find, but Photoshop is smart and can track things across different drives if you needed to. We've done an initial edit here, adding music and getting some clips in the right order, and we're gonna continue to build out this sequence. Now, I've got room to add more shots here at the end, but as a teaser for my initial video edit, this is a good place to start. And to do that, we're gonna add some transitions. Now, transitions should be used to indicate a change in time or place, and you don't need to have a transition on every single shot, so be judicious. A cut is a transition. But if you want to add stylized transitions, just click this little black and white square here, and this allows you to choose from the pop-up and drag it down. For example, maybe I want to fade in from black on this clip. Let's go ahead and play that. I like that, but I want it a little slower, so I'm going to click, and you see it becomes selected, and now I can drag. In fact, I can drag that out and specify a new duration. There's two and a half seconds. I like that. And let's put a transition there in between. I'll click the pop-up menu and add a crossfade, but watch very closely. There's something that happens that's important to note. You'll see that the clips become shorter when you add the crossfade, because it, in this case, it took half a second off of each side and blended it together. So if you precisely edit it to music, you might need to actually extend that out just a little bit, and you see that everything will ripple again. So that's why I used markers on an earlier movie and left them so it was easier to find my edit points. In this case, that transition is going to start right about where the marker was. Let's have a look. I like that there. That worked well. And I think I want a very slow transition into the train. So let's do a crossfade here. And we're going to click on that crossfade transition, make it longer, about three seconds. There we go. And I'm going to grab that edge for that clip and drag it out. And you see, in doing so, everything ripples. That's one of those major benefits of turning on that comment track so you can see where your edits should occur when you're trying to time out to things like music or narration. I like that slow transition into the moving train. And at this point, we're seeing a change in time. It's going from daytime to night in our next shot. There it is. And I want to change the type of transition, so I'm going to do a very slow fade through black. So we've got fade with black here, and I can add that. And let's lengthen that out a bit. And you see that type of transition did not change the edit point. So it's only the crossfade that really does. Let's have a look. That felt really good. I like that nice, gentle transition there. And I want to crossfade with a gentle superimpose here between those two shots so we see the bouquet of the lights blending in. And I'm just going to move that down a bit. There we go. That cut worked just fine there, actually. Hit the music and it was in camera cut. That was almost there. Let's just trim that one up a little bit. I'll select it, clip with the scissors, and then click off and on that little clip to select it, and I could press delete. That's essentially an in camera wipe caused by people walking in front of my camera. 
And if that's working well for you, maybe you use a little tiny fade with black on that, but you shouldn't need much. You can go ahead and select that and trim it so it's very short. In this case, I'm only going to use about 10 frames. Let's see. That worked well. It made it feel just a little better. So let's do the same on this end. Fade with black. And we'll trim that so it's nice and short. And I like this transition because it doesn't affect my edit points. There we go. That worked well. Let's just put a little more of that walking in. I'll trim that shot back so we see our guy come in. That's good. And for now, I'm going to put a slow fade out on the end because I haven't finished my edit, but I'm going to post this as an excerpt and I want a gradual fade at the end to signify that the video is over, at least for now. Now, you'll note here that as we are working with audio, we can do the same sort of thing. So on the audio track here, if I select that, I can split it, click off, and then click on the piece I want to delete. For an audio fade, you don't actually need to use one of these transitions. Rather, you just click the button and you could put a gentle fade out on the audio. So we'll put a slow four second fade. Let's just type that in manually. And we'll put a one second fade in. All right, let's take a look at that from the beginning and see how it did. And that's working well. Now that fade to transparency at the back there, don't worry about that. That's easy to change. In this case, what happened is, is I used a fade. I'm going to swap that to fade with black and that's going to go to black instead. So as it fades out, you see it hits black. Now that little frame of transparency is just at the end there. I can trim that back and I don't have to really worry about that on export. It's just going to go to a simple black frame. This is looking good. I'm going to do some extra things like really quickly add a title, but then we'll do a little bit of refinement with some color correction in our next video. But let's add that title now. I'm going to click and actually add an additional video track. So I do that over here and I could say new video group and you'll see it adds another track in the timeline and another video group. Let's put that playhead over the track there and add a text layer. So I'll press T for text. And I'm just going to drag to make a text box using those safe title guides for guidance. Let's just add some text in. And I'm going to format this a bit so it works for me. Let's start by increasing the size. There we go. My name does not need to be so big. There we go. And I'm going to push that out to the right and drop it down a little bit. There we go. Let's switch the color here to white, use a slight off-white. And what I want to do is stylize this font a little bit. So I can click in the font panel there and just use the up and down arrow to step through my available fonts. Now I'm going to choose a font that matches sort of the feeling that I'm going for. And remember, Photoshop will also give you previews. If you just click, you could see all the fonts you have loaded if you want to choose. Now, don't worry about getting things perfectly matched, but you can choose ones that match your needs. And I'm just going to go with something a bit wider here. I like that. And let's make that a bit bigger. There we go. I'll take out one of these spaces. And using the font panel, you can do all sorts of things like control the tracking, 
in between letters. If you want those a little looser, you can adjust the style. It's feeling pretty good. I'm just going to track that a little looser. We'll leave that at 100%, but we'll pull that out to a looser track. Let's go with about 50. There we go. That's good. And to improve the readability of that, I'm just going to add a layer style. So let's do a drop shadow so it stands out a bit more over the background. And remember, you could just pull that drop shadow into place interactively. I can add a slight stroke if I want, and I think that actually helps a bit. But I'm going to lower its opacity so it's not so strong. And that feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and position that. I can take advantage of alignment tools. There they are. And I'm just going to align that centered. There we go. Let's pull this down so we can see it a little bit better. That feels about right. I'm going to tweak that stroke just a little bit. A little darker, just a tad thinner. All right, that feels good. And you see that that title is placed in there. I could apply the same sort of fades if I want. There's that transition. Let's just put that same thing. We're going to do a fade with black on this one and pull it out to match. Remember, you can use your playhead for guidance there to help you. And let's extend that. And then we'll have that fade out with that first shot. So we'll just use the simple fade and trim that back to match. All right, let's have a look. And that works really well. So let's go ahead and save our work, file save. And in a future video, we'll do a little bit of color work to improve the appearance of this video.